Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. We are here once again in Cayenne Mountain where we're rocking out with Trevor. Welcome, sir. Yes. So, we're building a Tesla coil. Yes. We've got a secondary. We've got a power supply. We should probably make a base. Probably would, would help. really be the thing to do. So, you want to go out into the shop and see what we can find to build a, a stand for putting things on? All right. Okay, because we're going to need a spot for the spark cap, which will be our next video, with any luck. Um, and MMC array, and then this, and, and then you have a Tesla coil, really. I mean, it's, it's not a lot to it. We've got to build the base, and we're going to need a primary mount. So it's going to be a whole thing. Okay. All right, let's go to the shop. All right. All right, so now we're in the machine shop. We've got our basic design done, and Moose, who is Hi. the goddess of all things CNC for the Geek Group. Yes. That could be your official job title, goddess yeah. of CNC. <laughs> um, you've got the designs. You've done all the... I took the numbers that you guys yeah. gave me and I turned it into code. Okay, and we love you for it. Because that part's really boring, yeah. so I just did it. So we've got that. Now we're going to start with our sheets. And this is just a three-quarter inch sheet, 24 inch square, UHMW. Yep, pretty, okay. pretty generic piece of material. We've got two of them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to turn our sketches into well-crafted programs. Yes, so we have to do a couple of things before we can even do that. Okay, what are you doing? Well, we put a new table on this morning, so I have to square the table to itself. Okay. Otherwise, your parts are going to be crooked. This is important, then. It is important. Okay. Now, this table won't be perfectly flat, but it doesn't the, matter. The this flat is doesn't matter because us. we're cutting out. Yeah. It's the square part that matters. Okay. Well, you have a helper. Yes. Trevor desperately wants to be your helper. So <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely. I'm going to get out of here because I don't have a mic and you don't really need me for this. So you guys I, have I, fun. I don't. I do this every day all on my own. All right. I will see you when you're done with her. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. I'll Thank be you. back. All right. So what we have to do is I have this half inch router bit and we're just going to run it along this edge and that edge of the table. Okay. Because um, the plastic part that's underneath it is perfectly square to the table, okay. but we don't want to cut into the plastic, so we put a piece of wood on top of the table as a scratch board. And last week I made a huge mess on my scratch board, so we put a brand new one on today, and it's not square. It's pretty square. If you run your finger down here, you can feel it's pretty close, but mm -hmm. it's not quite perfect. Um, so we're just going to push this back, and... We could do this with the program, but it's easier just to run it manually. Okay. So. how much of a material we took off over here. It's yeah. almost a quarter inch. Yeah. But over there, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch. So okay. the table was not quite, with the, the scrap material, it was not quite square. that cut all the way through so we don't need to do that again. Okay. So now we're going to actually set up for the part we're going to cut. We're going to need a drill with a Phillips head drill bit on it. What do you mean Phillips head? Um, the plus sign. Well, I mean, street. Phillips had drill bit. Yeah, on the drill, because we're going to put screws through this. Oh, the, the machine puts screws in? No, we're going to mount the, the plastic to the table Okay. with screws. Okay, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, I see, I see. Okay. So, do you want me to just get this one out of the way right now? We're going to do both of them. Oh. So we'll just have one over here and one over here. Okay. And we want a little bit of a gap between them because the tool is going to come up right up to the edge. So we want there to be room. Okay. How much space on, from the edge of the you table? You want it flush. Flush. 
So what we're going to do is it's going to, you see I have this um, step back, there's a laser beam. Oh, okay. It's a safety feature. If you break the laser beam when it's doing something, it stops. Okay. That way you cannot accidentally like stick your arm into the machine. <laughs> it's a really great feature because this is such an open machine. Mm -hmm. It would be unreasonable to have it completely fenced off. So they put a laser. So we're going to use this, which is a V cutter. Okay. It's going to tap the four corners and that'll give us a spot where we know where to put our screws, which will hold it down while it's cutting. Okay. But before we can do that, we have to hold the material down to tap the holes. Ah. But we know we're putting a hole in the middle of the fixture. Okay. It's going to com get completely cut out. Right. So we're going to make an X and find the center and put a couple of screws in the middle here, tap the holes, put screws in those, okay. take these screws out. Okay. It's, it's kind of a multi-step process, but we don't have a vacuum table. We just have a piece of wood to screw it onto. So it, it's the easiest way to do that. Okay. So we want um, the T-square and a marker so that we can find the middle. So make sure that your corner lines up and I have my corner line up. Let me get this out of the way. All right. And then get your corner up there. All right, and we'll do that again. The nice thing about UHMW is it's pretty much putty. Okay. You can do whatever you want to it. Okay. The downside is, is it eats tools. So it'll cut really nice, but you'll notice that after about an hour, your tool doesn't cut very well anymore, and you're oh. just gumming it up. Okay. Then. So have you ever done any work with CAD before? Yes. So you know about X, Y, and Z? Absolutely. Okay. On this machine, this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. Mm -hmm. And the way that Haas can tell the spindle where to go is to set a home coordinate, which it works off of what's called G54. And G54 means this is where I start to do everything. And every number in the code references off of G54. Okay. Um, because the machine's home is that corner, okay. but it would be basically impossible to constantly program based off of that corner. Your workspace would have to be the size of the table every time. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to find this corner. That's where I told the program home was. Okay. I like working off the bottom left corner because then all of the numbers we're working with are positive. Okay. So this would be a positive X and this is a positive Y. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're working in like with jigs, most people put it up here because that's where the mouth of the jig never moves. Okay. But we're going we're gonna to work off of this corner. We could use um, a center edge finder to find it, but we've got a fair amount of leeway in the program and I've got a really sharp V cutter here which will get us more than close enough for what you need. Okay. So we're just going to move it over. And since we are going to do a little bit of cutting with this, we're going to find the height with it as well. Okay. So that is over, it's hovering over the corner. Okay. So we tell it that's our part zero. Now we have to tell it 
where the top of the material is. Okay. So now that we've done that, we have to tell it what program we want to cut. So we're going to, you always, always do a preview in graphics mode to mm -hmm. make sure that what you're telling it to do is actually what you want it to do. So that looks like roughly what we wanted it to do, four little dots. Make sure that it doesn't look like it's going to hit anything. And then we'll let it do it. That thing goes really fast. It will move up to 1,500 inches a minute. That's awesome. So let's make sure we can see our dots. We might have to make them a little deeper. Oh, I see it. I can it. see that one. And yep. I can... Uh, so they're just barely there, but we don't need more than that. I barely see that one. But you can see it, right? Yeah. So what we're going to use is a 3 8 inch flat end mill. Okay. I picked something kind of big because it's going to be cutting out the plastic, and I wanted it to be able to stand up to that. Um, so is the bit going to be quite a bit smaller when it's done? Or? The tool? Yeah. No, but you want to use the physically largest tool you possibly can at any given moment. Okay. If you use, um, say, if we used an eighth inch for this one, the risk of it snapping in half oh, because okay. we're cutting something that's three quarters of an inch tall is much higher. Okay. Chris, are we just going to do two more of these then? Yeah. All right. This is going to have to be heavily deburred though. Let's see what we got. I don't know if we're ever going to get all those out. Yeah, we will. All right, so thank you, Moose. You're welcome. We appreciate welcome. your help. This is awesome. We've got our upper and lower decks. Yes. And we've done some really cool design while we did this because mm -hmm. we, we actually want to explore some of the powers of what we can do with the CNC in regards to the Tessa coil. Right. So we have to do more software stuff. Yes. There's more design. I, I've got a couple hours of drawing ahead of me. Okay. And because of the time that's going to take, we're going to come back. Yes. So this is a two-part video. This is. Okay. So we're going to break right now because we've, we've got our allotted time every week and we're an hour over that. It's but fine. I don't care. No, do you've I. got spring break next week. I do. So you're going to be here a lot. And we're going to tinker on this, and it's going to be a whole thing. Okay. So, but we've got, this is our, our base primary coil form, and that's cut. And we did this all CNC, which is really cool. And I want to take this to the next level, because we can do a lot with this machine. And we got it. Why not use it? So we're going to have fun with it. So thank you for coming, thank sir. Thank you. Thank you, Moose, You're for welcome. cutting. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You guys have fun. I'm Chris. That's Moose. That's Trevor. We'll be back next week with more fun on the Trevor Tesla Coil project. Until then, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.